this mic here because it seems to be on this one. I'm going to try and fix the mic right now. Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. Let me know that you're here, that you're joining us. 
And what's going on with you today as we try to reset the mic? I'm not sure what's going on there. No problem to have this beautiful pink mic in my face if we need to, though. No, it wants us to use the pink mic. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to shift this over and hopefully we'll be all right with the pink mic today. I can even bring it out of shot. There we go. Hopefully that's loud enough for everyone. Let me know. Oh, wait, it switched back over. Oh my gosh, what an interesting start today. Right. Hello, everyone. How are we doing? I know we might have a quieter show today since many of you are on spring break. Let me know if that's you. Let me know if you're at MTNA this week and you're skiving off to be here. <laughs> Hello, Jonathan and Mia and Rachel. Hi, Lee. Welcome again. Okay, so good to see familiar faces and perhaps new ones here. So do let me know if you're joining us live. We're going to be talking about transfer students today and I'm looking forward to it. We're talking about uh, different checkpoints for transfer students, things I think we should all watch out for when we're working with transfer students and maybe some ideas on how to look for those things without it feeling like a test for our transfer students. And I don't think these are going to be the checkpoints you're expecting because they're not all about sight reading. So that's going to be fun. That's coming up in our main topic section. Um, but first, I'd love to hear from you and how you're all doing and what we're doing our normal warm ups and all that kind of thing after a couple of weeks off. So Jonathan, first time being here live. Awesome. Welcome. Glad you could make it this time. And yeah, let me know if it is spring break. I know that varies a lot in the US. We don't have spring break here. We have an Easter break, so that's in a couple of weeks for me. But um, Victoria is here. And Dina, NCKP was just recently announced for 2023 that it's going to be in real life. So super excited to go back to Chicago. It's not in Chicago. It's in Lombard, but whatever. Going through Chicago again for that, hopefully next year. Um, Edna from snowy western Pennsylvania. Nice. Lee already had spring break, not at MTNA. Oh, oh gosh, I'm sorry to hear that. I've had the sinus infection. That's terrible. But you're here and you don't have to speak for this. So hopefully that's pleasant for you. My voice may be a little bit more hoarse than usual, but you might not even notice it. It's one of those things where when you hear it yourself, it like sounds so different, but then other people can't even hear it. But I was at a like actual in-person thing with loud people. It was really weird <laughs> on Friday. So my voice is a little bit gone. Um, Angie is here and Luana. Awesome stuff. Okay. Got people joining from around the world. So good to see you all here. We're going to get started. So I'm going to hit the go button. And that means it's time for you to hit the thumbs up. Do us a favor and help spread the word on YouTube. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, beautiful teachers, and welcome to another Vibrant Music Teacher Chat here on YouTube. This is our weekly live show where you get to get your questions answered. We discuss a special topic each week. And we also discuss some latest news and goings on in the music teaching industry. So if you're brand new here, you are incredibly welcome. Please say hi to us in the chat. We don't bite. We are the friendliest community around, and we would love, love, love to hear from you. And if you're joining us for the 50 billionth time, Welcome back. It's great to have you here. Teresa, I see you just joined us. That's awesome. Recovering from COVID. Glad to hear you're on the mend. So that's really great and that you've been able to teach online. That's great to hear, Teresa. So we're going to get started with our intros in just a second. Before that, though, we need to choose our snap camera. So if you are new, this is a new thing to you. We do an ask me anything section at the end. And if you want to ask a question that you want me to answer, it can be about anything. It doesn't have to be about today's topic. If you want to ask a question, just type the word question followed by your question. And I will make sure to come back to it to the best of my ability at the end. But during that, we have another little fun element which is that I get to look a bit silly and you get to pick how I look silly. So we always have two different options. So here's the first one for you. 
This is the first more elegant option. Now, it is supposed to be rainbow hair, but apparently on short hair, it's not a full rainbow. So that's, you know, it's still fun purple hair, but it is a full rainbow on long hair. So I feel like they could have set that up differently. But anyway, I know nothing about how they code these things. So I won't <laughs> claim to. That's your more elegant option. Or here's your ridiculous option. You are welcome to pick either one of these. I don't mind looking ridiculous. This one is a coffee bean. So would you like me to be a coffee bean while we answer questions later? And again, you can type your questions at any time. Just starting with the word question. So coffee bean or purple hair. Which one are we going to go for? Vote in the chat. You're welcome to do either one, as I say. Yeah, I look ridiculous like this, but you know, that's that comes with the territory. I'm a teacher, right? I can look ridiculous. I like how I kind of still have hair on one side, but not the other. Kinda. <laughs> Purple hair. Coffee bean. Oh. Purple hair seems to be winning. Nobody wants a ridiculous coffee bean. I mean, not nobody. Jonathan voted for you. I mean, I'm kind of with you, Jonathan, but it seems like we're going for the purple hair. Rainbow purple, of course. Okay. Rainbow purple it is. My glamorous option with my weird cartoon eyes. Do you see them? It's like I've got, I mean, several layers of eyeliner on, which I do not. We'll come back to that beautiful view, this beautiful view at the end. Right now, <laughs> right now, we are going to go into our warm ups. So I'm going to switch over to my screen. Here we go. This is Rhythm in Five. That's actually the second one we're doing today. This is the first one we're doing today. So we're going to practice it first together. Here's what the actions mean. I want you to do this with me now. Don't just sit there at home. Do it with me. Heart is touch your heart or make a heart if you're like some of my students. Shoulders is the orange one. That's touch your shoulders, which you can't see, but I'm touching my shoulders. Yellow is touch your head. And that's all we need. So there's going to be a track. It's going to have one bar, one measure of count in um, of just the drummer. And then it's going to start and we're all going to give it a go. Are we ready? Okay, we're going to do it. It's always good when the ending is easy, right? Where you mess up the whole thing and then the ending lands, so it's all okay? I think so too. <laughs> Let me know how you got on with that one. We're doing one more. We always do two rhythm warm-ups. So this one, we have um, the heart and the head again, but we also have two hands. So that's going to be a patch or hands on lap. Tap your lap or tap a table or a bench or a piano, whatever you like. Um... Lee, that's a really great tip. I also tend to do both hands and I find it's easier. Some students like to do like this, but I find I get confused. So I give them both options. It's always good to have both. I find the symmetry helps me if I just try and move both. It works out better. Okay, so two hands on the legs. That's a new action and it's in two four. So there will be two bars of counting, two measures of counting. Here we go. Oh, before I start that one, Jonathan, your question. These are a vibrant music teaching resource. So they're available inside the membership. There's a printable version and an on-screen version, which is what we're using right now. But both are available to vibrant music teaching members. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm not really on the ball today, but if you're not either, that's okay. They are so much fun, aren't they, Victoria? I absolutely love these. Okay, that's our two rhythm for today. Now we're going to switch over to solfa. So this is our singing exercise. We only do one of these. So give it your best shot. This one is the first level of our Salfa Railroad series. So it is very simple. It only uses me, so, and la. 
If you don't like sulfa, you don't have to use sulfa. You can just hum it. You can say do, 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 do. You can make up your own fancy words, whatever you prefer. So these ones, the track is going to start with the tonic chord and starting note, then count in and then begin. I'm just going to do the sulfa hand signs because it tends to mess things up when I sing along, but you sing along at home. You can do the hand signs as well if you like. Do you enjoy your little singing? Okay, here we go into our news segment. All right, so let me know your news. This is not just my news. I'd love to hear what's going on with you in your studio. And if you found any recent releases from anyone that you're really excited about, any new blog posts, any new podcast episodes that you loved recently, I'm going to share some of the things going on around here, but I'd love to hear yours as well. Now, the major thing going around around here is our Turbo Boost conference. So the Teacher Turbo Boost is coming up really soon. It's in two weeks. And that means two things for you. First of all, it's time to go get your ticket if you haven't got a ticket. So teacherturboboost.com. But it also means we're not going to have this show for two weeks. There's the Turbo Boost and then I have a week off. So we only have this show next week. And then the following week will be the conference. We won't be doing this show. And then have a week off to recover from the conference. So we won't be doing the show. So next week is our last show for a couple of weeks, just so you know. But the Teacher Turbo Boost is so much fun. So let me tell you a little bit about it. Because the way this, this conference works, the way I set it up, was very, very careful and intentional and not like other conferences. I enjoy other conferences. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them. But when I produced this last year for the first time, I knew it wanted it to be very different to what was being offered elsewhere. So the main purpose behind this conference, the main center of it, the heart of it, is the community. It's not a load of really long workshops. It's about having an experience together together so there's not different streams there's not a whole bunch of stuff to choose from you show up on one page on our site right that's what your ticket gets you access to and everything is there for you and we all do it together the whole time okay so there's nothing wrong with the other way this is just a different style and i found it creates the best community experience for us all to do together So the way it works is that there are loads of wonderful guest sessions, which I'm about to tell you about, but those are all pre-recorded. The reason I do pre-recorded videos rather than having them show up live on streaming software like this or on Zoom or something is so that, number one, everything runs on schedule because I'm a bit of a stickler for time. (laughs) Number two, there's no tech issues because it's all just me running it from my computer. And... Number three is that I find that presenters put more thought and conscious, careful planning into a pre-recorded session rather than showing up live. I'm not saying they don't prepare to show up live. Presenters are awesome and it's a lot of work to do that as well. But having them pre-recorded means that I can stay with you because I'm not focused on making sure they run on time and they provide the right content. I already know that's going to happen. So I host it live. We're together live, but the sessions are pre-recorded. And that means I can be in the chat with you all the way through the sessions. And it's really, really fun. So since the sessions are pre-recorded, that means that I've already watched them. I watched them all last week for quality assurance, of course, and to make sure I know what's going on and everything like that. So I watched all the sessions last week and I actually made fabric flowers while I did it. I made a fabric flower wreath for my door as I, and it finished perfectly on time. Anyone had anything work out like that for them recently? It was so handy. Finished the wreath literally at the end of the last session I was watching. It was amazing. But because I watched them all last week, I wanted to give you a quick rundown of what they're all about so you can get a taste of what the conference is and what's involved. Now, what's not included in this are all my sessions and all the in-between bits and all the discussions with other attendees. But the guests we have, the first one is Fred Karpov. So if you're not familiar with Fred, he's so amazing at breaking down technique in a way that's really understandable. 
And he's great, I think, particularly for the more intermediate advanced level stuff. And Fred is going to be sharing a session called Unpacking Invention. So he's looking at a particular Bach invention. You can apply all his technique tips and his practice tips that he goes through in this session to any other invention or really Baroque music. I think it's very applicable to a lot of Baroque music. So that is Fred. That's our first guest session after my first um, introductory session. And then we have Grace Lee. And she's going to be sharing sight, sound and touch, how to improve your student's intervallic quotient or IQ. So I think this is a really nice way to frame intervallic work. And she's really talking about, okay, we focus so much on sight with intervals. How can we make it more about sound and touch and do different activities for that? So tons of great ideas in that session. And all of these are just 20 minutes. So they get straight to the point. Then we have Bradley Sowash. Many of you will be familiar with Brad me, Bradley, Brad me, Bradley. <laughs> so shout out in the comments if you're a Bradley fan. He is sharing Hannon hacks. So he's taking on Hannon and jazzifying it and making it really fun and interesting for students to practice with loads of ideas for that. So that all happens on day one. And the theme of day one is root. So we're rooting into things we're already doing. That's why it's Bach and intervals and Hannon. How can we take traditional stuff and, and amplify it? How can we take what we already do in our studios and make it even better? So that's root. And at the end of every day, we have a Zoom call with all the en- other attendees. And we do huddle sessions. So that means breakout rooms on Zoom. And you get to discuss with the other attendees about the sessions you've seen that day. So then on day two, the theme is stick. And our first session is from Tim Topham. And that is how playing with others helped me play for life. So it's about playing with other students and the opportunities for that and why it matters so much in our studio. Something I truly believe in as well. Then we have Samantha Coates and some of you may have seen a clip from this actually just recently on my Instagram if you follow us there at Colorful Keys. So Sam is talking, is sharing ideas for DIY flashcards. Now these are not boring flashcard activities. These are so much fun and so creative. Um, they're, they're just amazing. And I'm her student. So we actually recorded this together and on Zoom and I'm her fake student. And I even mess up at one point. So if you want to see me mess up, you have to come along to the conference and watch that session. It's so much fun. Then we have Sharon Mark Taggart, who is from the Curious Piano Teachers, who you may know. And she has some amazing scale practice ideas, ones you haven't heard before. There were some new ones to me, so they're going to be new to you too. Loads of ideas during that session. Then on day three... We have um, flip as our theme. So how can we switch things up that we're already doing? So we're starting to make some changes. Rosemary Penner is sharing flipping our role as music teachers on its head. So she's talking about creating independent learners in our studio, how to flip our role and change what we provide so that students eventually leave our studio knowing how to learn by themselves. Then we have Stacey Farian. And Stacy is, her session is entitled Get Inside Your Piano. And she had a hilarious thing about her cat physically getting inside her piano. But that's not what it's about. No cats and pianos, okay? It's about the harmonic series and really understanding, if you haven't explored this a lot before, concert pitch and equal temperament and where that came from and then the harmonic series. It's such creative ideas for using that for composing with your students. And then finally, on day three, we have Jana Carlson, and she's sharing an idea she calls the virtual studio, which is a way to set up a portion of your website so that students can use it for self-paced learning or like asynchronous learning while you need to take a break. So examples she gives, well, for herself, she used this when she went to Portugal for a month, six weeks. I can't remember the exact length of time, but she did that because they're going to be moving to Portugal and they had to go and like check out lots of different locations and see what was the right one. So she knew she couldn't like 
set herself up with a piano. She was going to be traveling way too much. So that's one way, but that might not be yours at all. It could be maternity leave. It could be that you need to look after an aging relative for a period of time that you just want to take a vacation. Like it could be any reason, but it's a great, great idea. And she gives detailed plans of how you would implement it and what you would put in it. Then on day four, I've got two left to share with you. We have Dorla Aparicio and she is sharing 10 solid reasons to avoid group piano. So in a way, it's a bit tongue in cheek, but it's also not. Dorla is a great believer in teaching group piano, which I love. But I also love that she's not just like fake telling you reasons you shouldn't do group teaching. She's being quite honest about why it's great and why that means some people shouldn't do it because they're not in it for the right reason. So it's a really good perspective if even if you haven't thought about doing group piano, it might even ground you into the way that you teach now and why that's right for you, which can be really powerful. And then finally, for the guest sessions, we have Christopher Oyle and he's sharing unsticking a stuck piece. So if you've ever had a student who does comp- like you've done composing with them and they just get in a complete rut or they can't even get started, they get completely stuck. Christopher has amazing suggestions for you to get you out of that rut. Day five is just me and you. And that is just sessions for me because I like to intentionally slow down the pace at the end of the conference so you can start to digest it, come up with the things you're going to use from the conference and move forward with an action plan rather than just leaving like totally in a whirlwind of amazing ideas but with no plan to actually use them, which is the really hard part about conferences. So that is a very, very quick overview of the full week. You can check out more again at teacherturboboost.com and you can get your ticket there. It is April 11th to 15th. So it's April 11th to 15th, Monday to Friday, three hours a day. The first two hours are the presentations. And the final hour of each day is the huddle call. So the first two hours are recorded. You can watch them back as many times as you like for a year if you have a ticket and you don't have to be there live to watch those. The huddle calls, you can only attend live because they're discussions between you, right? It's not me presenting anything. It wouldn't make any sense to record them and it would be a bit intrusive, honestly, on the small groups that are talking. So those are not recorded, but the first two hours are and you can watch those as much as you want. So if you are in a different time zone, it's still the same ticket. You just can watch the replays on the same page. Everything works the same way. Jonathan, it is $69 for the whole week. $69 for the whole week. All the details though of everything that's included are on that page. So go to teacherturboboost.com and you can see everything there and of course the price and how to sign up. Rachel, yes, in a big way you will. So we do have a Facebook group associated with the event, but that's more for like out of hours kind of thing. So it's like in between the days and people watching the replays, they'll go in there and chat or bring things up or or tag me if they have a question. But the real community aspect, in my view, is what's happening on the page live. That's the real community heart. So if you can show up live and be in the chat there, that's where you're going to get all the community feeling, honestly. And especially if you can join the Zoom calls every day, that's the heart of the community. The Facebook group is kind of extra to that. It's on the side. It's definitely not a necessary part of this experience. It's more for people who just like things to be on Facebook and to have a bit of chat there as well. Okay, so that's the Teacher Turbo Boost. That's my big news because it's coming up in two weeks. So if you haven't got your ticket, go grab it. We don't allow late signups because it will have started and that's it. So it's time to get your ticket. (laughs) That's what I'm saying because we don't make exceptions to stuff like that. Once it started, you won't be able to get a ticket. Um, We don't have like a special replay pass or anything like that. You just sign up before it starts and you'll get access to it live and the replays. That's how it works. So um, in other news, I have one more piece of news, which is about Uh, the member podcast. So just for members that are watching, you may have seen this already. 
but we have a brand new feature where you can subscribe to a private members only podcast. And that is going to be the tweak of the week, which is the one to two minute video that really doesn't need to be video. It's me talking to camera like this. So it's definitely going to work on audio. So we're going to send that to a private member podcast to make sure that it just arrives on your phone. Like if you're already a podcast listener, this is so handy. It just arrives there on your busiest week. You've got like a one minute piece of advice that you can put into action straight away. And that's it. So you should have an email about it if you're a member already of Vibrant Music Teaching. And you just reply to that email or email us and request to be put on the list. And we're slowly getting through the application. So if you have applied and you aren't you haven't received it yet, don't worry. It's because we have to go through one by one because it is a private member feature and that's the way it works. Angie, getting my ticket for Turbo Boost today and looking forward to sharing the link this week for parent webinar. Yes, we did a parent webinar last week um, and I'm really interested in whether you all, especially after you've shared this first one, whether you all would like me to do more of them because I'm all about prioritizing things that matter to you members. So if you're like, ah, I can't convince the parents to watch them or I just think other things are more valuable, that's fine. I won't be offended. You can tell me. But if you absolutely love it, tell me that as well because then I'll prioritize putting those together periodically for members for different things. I have different ideas on that, like one for brand new students and at different stages of study and that kind of thing. Maybe one about what to expect based on the amount of practice with some examples. I think that'd be really useful for parents. But again, only if it's useful for you, only if you feel you can send that to parents and that get them to watch it. Okay, so that's all my news. Thank you for sharing yours. Um, Angie, I saw your recital is coming up. That's great. So do let us know how that goes as well once it's over because I think our show will be yeah no I'll see you before that on the show if you're back on the show I mean okay let's dive into our main topic which is about transfer students I have eight different checkpoints to share with you about your transfer students and I actually have one bonus one at the end as well so these eight checkpoints are things that I think every teacher should make sure of when they take on a student that has started elsewhere. And these are all things that it is so easy to assume a student already knows or has in place and they can come back and bite you big time later. So as we go through these, let me know if one of these resonates with you. If you've forgotten to check this, didn't know you should check it before and have realized way later that you should have made sure about this. Number one is that their parent knows about practice, generally. Do you check this with all your transfer students? I know I used not to. And I don't just mean that their parents know that they should practice, although that's important as well. But I mean any education that you would normally do with a new parent, assume it hasn't happened honestly, because it might have, it might not have, it might have happened differently. Like their old teacher might have insisted on a timer and you hate timers or the opposite. I'm not here to pass judgment about what you expect from your students in terms of practice, but you need to make sure the parent knows that. Uh, For me, it's a big one to make sure they understand that they should be involved in practice. That was often missing in their previous teacher, like that they were quite hands off about it even with the young student, and I make sure the parent knows, okay, this is how we do things. It's no judgment on the previous teacher. It's just, this is how we do things here. This is what I recommend. Here's how you get it started. I'm here if you need help, etc. Checkpoint number two on your list is related. It's the home instrument. Do you make sure that your transfer students have an appropriate home instrument? Many teachers forget to do this even with new students, but even more will forget to do it with transfer students. I've heard this story many times. They take on a student who's been learning for three years, so they don't ask them about their home instrument, and two more years into study, they suddenly have an online lesson with them or some other circumstance happens where they see the home instrument, and it is a heap of junk. It's a keyboard sitting on a dining room table, or some other inappropriate home instrument situation. 
Maybe they don't even have one if they didn't know bed practice before. So make sure you check it just like you would with any new student. I make all my new students, including transfers, take a photo at home of them showing me their piano posture after the first lesson. This lets me double check that even though the parent described the instrument to me and I've checked with them, that it definitely is right and that they knew what they were talking about. Not that they were intentionally trying to lie to me, I don't ever believe that, but sometimes they don't know what they don't know. So they will insist that it is a digital piano, but it actually isn't. It just is like a really junky fake digital piano because it's on like a furniture stand, but it's actually not any good. Weird things can happen. So you have to make sure the home instrument is correct and supplement to that kind of 2B is that they have a proper stool or seat of some description that is appropriate to sit on that's at the right height. Don't assume any of that is in place. Number three is again related, and that's the basic posture. So now we're dealing with the first lesson, and this is where you wanna make sure that your transfer student knows the basics about sitting properly, about setting up their bench, about the distance they should be away from the piano. Again, basically teach them this as if they were a new student. And you can do this without it coming across like you think they're a beginner. You can just say, okay, so at the start of every lesson, we set up like this to make sure everything's correct for lessons. And do it alongside them. So it's just like a warm-up lesson routine and it's what you do. And you make sure that they understand that and how to set it up at home. And again, ideally get them to take a photo at home so that they actually follow through with it. (laughs) And so that you can see that home instrument. Number four is non-legato and arm weight. So you can be quite sneaky about this. You can teach your student, your new student who's a transfer, a rope piece. A piece that they learn from demonstration. And while they're learning that, make sure they're playing it with good non-legato, arm weight, moving freely, all the technique things you're looking for. So that you can check all of these things without having to ask them whether they know what non-legato is. I don't care if they know the word, honestly, but I do care if they can play that way or not. So I do that by playing a rope piece with them or doing a improv where it clearly needs to be non-legato. The next one is keyboard geography. Again, I can pick all this up while we're doing our rope piece because I can deliberately not really show them where I'm starting and say, okay, it starts with one on D and in the left hand, five on A or whatever. And I can just make a note, watch carefully and observe whether they jump straight to those keys or whether it takes them a sec, or whether they really can't find the right key at all. That is a big one. Keyboard geography is not taught properly. I found this to be the case in a lot of different places. Now, again, this is not about casting judgment on the previous teacher, okay? So I'm not here to say, oh, the teacher was useless. They didn't teach keyboard geography. But this student is now our responsibility. So no matter what they were taught, it's our responsibility to figure out what they need to know and what you need to reinforce with them. And if they don't know keyboard geography properly, if they can't find the correct keys on the piano, you are in trouble. (laughs) And it doesn't matter how well the previous teacher taught it to them. You need to find a way to teach it to them yourself because otherwise you're going to be stuck. Number six is rhythm reading. So this is one where you can do something like Rhythm Railroad that we did in the warm up today and use that to figure out whether they can actually read the rhythm. Or you can play a rhythm reading game like all the different ones we have inside Vibrant Music Teaching. And this doesn't have to feel like a test at all. And you don't have to check that they know the right terms. I'm not interested in that either. If they learn them as ta and ti, or if they learned Gordon rhythm syllable systems, or if they learned takadimi or fruit rhythms, or counting or crotches and minims or quarter notes and eighth notes. I don't care. (laughs) What I care about is can they perform a simple rhythm that they should be able to at their level? 
And to do that, you can easily do something like Rhythm Railroad or one of the games, as I said, because they don't know that they're supposed to know this particular thing. You can kind of gloss over that and just be observing them. And you can do it alongside them and they can kind of absorb it from you as well. Number seven is intervallic reading. So now we're getting into something that you might have thought would come at the beginning of this list, which is checking their sight reading. Now, you don't even have to test, again, whether they know the word interval or do any interval flashcards or anything like that. If you give them a piece of sight reading that is maybe not in whatever position they used in their method book, so you do need to know what they were using before, but if they, for example, used a middle C position method book to start and you know that, give them something that's in a different spot and give them the starting note if they need it, no problem. But hope that they can read the seconds and, and thirds or steps and skips from there. And if they can't, again, you're noting that, you're not judging them, you're not saying, are you, you don't know, right? You're not going to be mean. But you are just going to notice what they can and can't do there. Number eight is my final official one, and that is pitch awareness. And I would do this with oral echoes. So you play something on the three black keys, they have to play it back to you. This is something that may not have been taught at all and may still be absolutely fine with your transfer. But if they cannot repeat simple patterns back to you, you want to be aware of that and start to work on pitch with them and their ear training. And my little bonus one is terms and note names and rhythm, uh, sorry, no uh, music theory kind of details especially terms for stuff this is a bonus one because i believe you should delay this until a later lesson i don't think you should cover it the first lesson it's not the first thing i would check it's something you gradually want to discover and notice but it doesn't have to happen right in, right away because they can pick up turns almost by absorbing them from you right by osmosis even if they don't know the words crotches and minims which we use here in Ireland if I say them enough they're going to pick that up if they understood the note values already but if it's the understanding which are in those first eight things that I want to get first so let me know what you check with transfer students if you there's one of these you hadn't thought of before if there's one of these that has caught you out and now you always think about it, I would love to hear. All right, we're into our Ask Me Anything session section. So type your questions, start with the word question and followed by your question, whatever it is. I'll just answer this um, from Jonathan right away. Yes, so I showed the link earlier. It's teacherturboboost.com. Teacherturboboost.com. Or I'm just going to quickly grab the direct link and I'll drop it in the chat for you and for those others who are watching live, Jonathan. So teacherturboboost.com, though, if you want to type it directly into your browser, and that is where you can find all the details about the conference. I hope to see you there. It would be so good to have you there. As I said, it's $69 for the whole week, not per day or anything. So it's really very little per day. <laughs> um, I make it super affordable on purpose. Not for any other reason, not to do with the value, just because I really wanted it to be affordable. It's really that simple. I started this conference as a little... And it's not my main my main thing it like the membership is the main thing and the conference I started last year because I felt disconnected from other teachers and a bit burnt out and I knew others would be feeling the same way and I just wanted us to come together so that's why it is the price it is and I've kept it the same for this year despite inflation etc etc I'm just gonna check I didn't miss any questions and you guys can type in your fresh questions if you have them otherwise I won't have purple hair for very long Oh, Tanya, um, do I have a playlist of the music I have playing when I have the countdown? No, I do not, but I can tell you it's all from artlist.io. Artlist.io. 
Um, it is all royalty free. I pay a subscription there and that means I can use it on things like YouTube videos, which most music you cannot. So don't go doing that. Anyone who <laughs> makes YouTube videos, but artless stuff you can. So that's why I use it. And in fact, the other day I put together all of the playlists for our dance breaks and our nature breaks during the turbo boost. So I'm looking forward to using those. So you won't hear any of the same ones you've heard on the show. I made all fresh playlists, one new one for each day. So we've got fresh dance music for us again. Jonathan, point number four, non-legato and arm weight. I want them to see that they're using their arm and they're playing with freedom. That was my fourth point. You can also watch this back, by the way. Um, on replay you're welcome to it's free all the time it's on youtube it, we don't take them down or anything like that jonathan um oh about the sessions in the turbo booth <laughs> secondly i read that as will we be able to ask questions about the turbo booth i'm like ask away anyway um Yes, you can ask questions about the sessions. Some of the guests will be there live, some will not. Like some, they are busy or it's totally the wrong time zone for them. Like Samantha Coates is in Sydney. She cannot show up live because it's at friendly Eastern time, which means it's really unfriendly in Australia. So some of them will be there live, some won't. So you are, but you can ask as many questions as you like. And a lot of the chatter that happens, like the members, the attendees can often answer each other's questions and I'm there to answer but if there's any that I'm like huh that's a good question I don't know I will get in touch with the speaker and get them to provide an answer so um, if there's anything like that that comes up yes and there's the chat going on the whole time the chat stream last time was insane I'm hoping it will be just as active this time which would be wonderful um, because it's just great to have so much community engagement going on and um, makes the whole thing come to life. So I love it. Uh, Dina, no. Parents being involved in practice for me has always been a positive. I know for some teachers, they have found that parents will get over involved. That hasn't happened to me ever. <laughs> I'm way more likely to have the opposite problem, I'm afraid, which is they them not doing anything. Uh, not being involved enough, not being there. I much prefer to emphasize that they do more and most of the time they don't do too much. Um, so yeah, that's but that's my perspective. Every community is quite different. If you have a pushy parent, you certainly need to look at that and look at the expectations of involvement and that kind of thing. But for me, I haven't had that problem. Um, yeah, okay beautiful variety of questions today okay so again if you want to sign up for the turbo boost that's teacher turboboost.com it is in two weeks less than two weeks two hours less than two weeks <laughs> that it's starting i don't think i said the times earlier so it is um 3 p.m to 6 p.m in my time zone which is ireland so eastern us that's 10 a.m to 1 p.m which means that western us it would be 7 a.m uh, that it's starting. So it means that it's very doable across the US and Europe. Showing up live in Asia and Aust Australia, New Zealand is much more challenging if you want to do it. If you're a night owl, I won't stop you. That would be awesome. But you can watch the replays if that's where you're located. Uh, Edna, oh my gosh, any rope piece that you teach anyway. Um, so that's a big question in a way, but what's an example? King of the African Drum from Piano Safari. Um, Feeling Good from Samantha Coates. There's two examples for you, but like I would have loads of rope pieces that I teach anyway that you could watch for that. How do I personally do that? Do I requ require a certain amount of daily practice, practice goals or repetitions, for example? How do I personally manage practice? I don't require specific goals or time or repetitions. We do set goals together, but I emphasize getting through all the assignments and practicing in the way that we discussed, which would be specific to whatever assignment is going on in terms of getting parents involved if that's what you're asking about 
I would be encouraging them to read Tanara, which is the practice app we use. So encourage your parents to read any practice notes that you give with the child. And I believe it is the parent's job to set up the practice routine. And then the kid's job to not object and go along with the routine, for sure. It's not that like they have to force them to practice, but it is it is on both sides and a child cannot be expected to come up with the time to practice or to set up their environment in a way that promotes good practice, i.e. if a child is practicing Xbox and then is expected to practice piano and is ripped away from their Xbox, no child's going to be happy about that and they're not going to do good practice if they do any. So that's kind of the discussions I have with parents, but I have a whole onboarding series of emails that I send out to them. So those are inside Vibrant Music Teaching for members that want to use them or tweak them to suit their own studio. And those go out at a two-week interval. So like once every two weeks, once a week in the beginning and then once every two weeks to teach parents about these basic things. Um, Jonathan, the time in Indiana for the start of the conference. Which time zone is Indiana? I'm really bad at knowing where each individual state is. Is it is that central? Um, so it would just be 9 a.m. if it's central. Uh, but yeah, it's 10 a.m. Eastern, so 9 a.m. Central. So 8 a.m. What do you call it? Mountain. 7 a.m. Western or Pacific. I uh, hope that helps. But yeah, there's um, a time zone converter. So if you just look that up, that's really handy. Yeah, Edna, thank you. 9am was my guess. I got it right. <laughs> um, oh, wait. We're in daylight savings time too, so just to confirm that. But do look it up on the time zone converter. That is the best thing to do. Um, but if you are the same as New York, then it's 10 a.m. If you're central time, same as Chicago, it's 9 a.m. for sure. Okay, hope that helps. Hope to see you all next week on the show. This That'll be our last one for a little while because we'll have a break. So I hope you can come back next week. And I hope you can come to the conference. It's going to be so, so much fun. So I will see you all one of those two places. Bye for now.